presentation of colors by the MTA Transit Police Honor Guard. Two, two. Huh. Right. Two. Honor Guard. Drill. Order. Huh. Point. Ladies and gentlemen, my name is Larry Zarian. I'm the chairman of the MTA. This is a great day. I can tell you that is, isn't this a magnificent setting? Not only do we have a great transit center, we have a beautiful structure, and not only that, what a beautiful day. You could have been, you could have said that you are in Hawaii, but you happen to be downtown Los Angeles in the most beautiful part of Los Angeles. I think that this structure, this transit police, this transit station is probably one of the best in the nation, if not in the world. As the chairman, I am proud of what we have accomplished. I am proud of something that is going to be here far beyond any one of us that are sitting on the dais or standing in the audience. As you see the buses going by here, you know that this, this transit station is already in operation. The public is riding. We're very proud of what is going to happen here. Millions of people are going to come through this transit station. Millions of people from around the world are going to come and see how beautiful this place is, how functional it is, how important it is not only to the city of Los Angeles, to the state of California, it is important to the nation to have a transit station that we can be proud of. Every bit of this, every brick, every part of this building is magnificent. It was built for today. It was built for tomorrow. It's built for all of us in the future. And how else do you do something like this? You don't say we're going to build a transit station that's cost effective, that does for today. We need to build something that's going to be here 75 to 100 to 150 years from now. That's what transit stations across the world are. You go throughout Europe, you go throughout this nation, You'll see that transit stations are there when very few people remember who the people were, who the decision makers were. What we are being criticized for today, we are going to be complimented tomorrow for having a vision, for having the guts, for having the nerve to stand up and say that we are going to build a transit station that is going to be to pride of Los Angeles, of every person that is a taxpayer in Southern California, everyone in the nation can be proud that this is a monument that we can be proud of. Everyone is going to feel comfortable. Everyone is going to be proud. You can bring your friends and say, let us go to the transit station in Los Angeles. Let me show you how beautiful the arts are. Let me show you how wonderful and how fun family oriented it is for everyone. I am proud of it, and I know all of my colleagues on the board feel the same way. I'm proud of the day that we decided to put it here. I'm proud of the day that we came today to come and not only cut the ribbon, to say thank you, Los Angeles. Thank you to everyone that was involved for making this a possibility, a reality. Some years back, no one would have believed it, but it's here. Many people, not only sitting at the dais, many people in the audience are responsible, and we thank all of you. Thank you for coming, also. Thank you. As you know, these kinds of things don't happen without many people. We are not going to have the time to introduce and to thank everyone that has a hand in the structure, in this building, in this plaza, in the beauty, in the arts, and everything. And I want you to know, just because your name is not mentioned, just because you're not at the dais, just because you're not here, 
giving you a plaque, it doesn't mean you're not appreciated. It means that there, it took a group of people to put this thing together. But then it took leadership. It took someone that was a part of the, a part of the, <laughs> a lot of leadership, yes. And it, was, it, it took a group of people that said, we are, we are going to build it here and then we are going to see through. First, I want to invite to the lectern the, um, the chairman, the person that was responsible in putting this thing together, the chairman of the board of directors of the Union Station Gateway, I, we have a little presentation to make for him. Nick Patsouris. Nick, would you come to the lecture? <laughs> Nick Patsouris needs very little recognition, and not only that, no one, no one that's standing here can say that you don't know the work that Nick has put in, not only as a member of, of the former RTD and the president, uh, but someone that has put in many, many hours, an untiring person with a lot of energy, a lot of commitment, and had it not been for his perseverance, his, his attitude in wanting to make sure that this project is completed. Let me tell, I've got to tell you a little, little story that happened this morning. We invited the press to come so we could take them for a tour, and the decision was that Franklin White Larry Zarian as a chair, and Nick Patsouris was going to take the press around the shoulder. I want to tell you, if you think I was able to say five words, you've got to think of it. It was all Nick Patsouris, and rightfully so, because he has had a lot to do with this. Nick, on behalf of the Board of Directors, and everyone, everyone connected with the MTA, we want to give you this, and to the rest of the group, to everyone, so we want you to know that we remember the work that you have done, and it says, with sincere appreciation, the Board of Directors of the Los Angeles County Metropolitan Transportation Authority gratefully recognizes the efforts of Richard Alatori, Vivian Bonzo, Nelson Rising, Ted Tanner, Robert Vogel, and the Chairman, Nick Patsouris. This is from all of us that are standing here and everyone with the MTA. Nick, Thank you, Larry, for your kind and gener generous words. But uh, a magnificent project like this is not the work of one person only. There are many, many persons, and I'm going to take the time to acknowledge some of them for their dedication and their spirit of teamwork. Because this project came together because everyone worked together. I want to thank Gary Spivak, John Bollinger, Shaker Suarez, and of course, Rob Bogle and Ken Connor of Catellus. And uh, we'll hear from him later, Assemblyman Garagosa, who thought sometimes I was nasty, but today he says I was right. <laughs> and I want to thank everyone for doing their best, for doing not that just a job, it was a labor of love. We are here this afternoon to dedicate this transit center in an office building. But we are here also to renew our personal dedication to what these buildings signify. This project has been shaped and energized by one compelling idea, the future of Los Angeles. These buildings symbolize and materialize the future of Los Angeles as the metropolitan core of a five-county economy that in and of itself ranks among the dozen most powerful economies in the world. <coughs> These buildings symbolize and materialize the continuing rise of Los Angeles as the leading metropolis of the United States, the Asian Pacific Basin, and Latin America. These buildings symbolize and materialize the continuing preeminence of the City of Angels as a center of culture, recreation, academic life, and the arts. The Greek philosopher Aristotle wrote that men and women come into cities so that they might become 
more human. These buildings then symbolize and materialize the city of Los Angeles in the service of its people. Long after we are gone, far into the 21st, even the 22nd century, men and women will be passing through these facilities and route to work, to leisure, to the refreshment of intellectual life and the arts. They will look around and see these structures prepared for them by an earlier generation. And they will know that we, in the last years of the 20th century, were possessed by an enduring faith in the destiny of the city of Los Angeles. These buildings finally symbolize and materialize our strong and persistent faith and hope in human culture, in American culture, in the culture of Southern California, in the culture and destiny of Los Angeles. Thank you. Uh, our next speaker is Assemblyman Antonio Villaragosa. Assemblyman Villaragosa is no stranger to the MTA. And those of us that have worked with him, you know that. When we talk about someone that is on, that put in untiring, unlimited hours to make sure that the people that were transit dependent, bus riders, and those that needed transportation in general in Southern California were well served, uh, recognize the work that Antonio Villaragosa has done. He also worked as on board of directors of the MTA board on the Union Station Gateway. And prior to that, he, prior to this, of course, he worked many, many days and many hours for the MTA, with the MTA. Since we have lost track of him to Sacramento, got elected to the 40, 45th Assembly District, and when we say we lost track of him, we lost track of him only at the MTA. But let me tell you, he has kept his ears, his eyes, with the MTA, and he knows what's going on, and he continues to ask questions through his staff and through his, for his total dedication to the MTA. Assemblyman Villaragosa serves on the Revenue and Taxation and Labor and Employment and Insurance Committees and the Assembly Select Committee on Insolvency of Orange County. Maybe he should have been on that a couple, three years ago. Orange County wouldn't have gone with the, where they are now. And then, of course, he serves as Vice Chair of the Assembly Public Safety Committee and, the, and then, of course, on several other important committees also. Prior to running for office, Assemblyman Rio Villaragosa was area representative for the United Teachers of Los Angeles. He is a lifelong resident of Los Angeles. He truly loves the MTA. He truly loves transportation. He has had a hand in the direction the MTA has taken, and he is an advocate of good transportation for Southern California. Let's recognize Assemblyman Antonio Villaragosa. Thank you, Larry, for those kind uh, remarks and introduction. I don't really have a lot to say except to thank people, and that's what I want to do. I was on the Union Station Gateway Board for a couple of years, and I can tell you there are a lot of heroes uh, who played a part in building this great building and this transit plaza. They were visionaries. They were people who were willing to dream and implement that dream at a time when there was a lot of criticism about this building and about the transit center. And I think you have to start with Nick Petsoris. And a great monument to public transit here in the United States, there's one reason we did that, and that's because of the vision of Nick Petsoris. And I want to publicly acknowledge him for that. But there were other people, Richard Ellis. There were other people. It was Richard Alatori, who week in and week out uh, made decisions about this building, the artwork, the kind of uh, community center that we wanted. Uh, there were people like uh, Ted Tanner, who uh, was the construction manager here. And a lot of people uh, sometimes had to take a lot of guff from all the rest of us. But he stayed in there. He also had a dream. Uh, there was Rob Vogel. Rob was here from the very beginning, and I'll tell you, uh, all of this is in a 
a big way, a testament to his fortitude, to his hard work, and to his dedication. And then finally, there was all the staff who put in countless hours to make this a reality. And that's why I wanted to be here. Because I think at a time when people uh, want to take uh, pot shots and criticism of the MTA, it's important to acknowledge the accomplishments of this agency. The Zero Tolerance Graffiti Program, where today in two years, you see not one single bus with graffiti on it. And that's because of the hard work of all the people here. So I'd like to think of today as a new chapter in the story of the MTA in Los Angeles. It begins here with a dream by one man, Mr. Pazoras, but a collective hard work of a board and the people of this agency. And I'm here today to acknowledge that. Thank you all so much. Uh, finally, our, our final speaker uh, is uh, our CEO, Franklin White. I can only speak about Franklin from, uh, from the heart. Uh, Franklin uh, became CEO uh, when the MTA was in its infancy. Uh, we went looking for a leader, uh, and we went nationwide to look for someone that could lead this organization. I have always said uh, that it, it would have taken three people uh, to run the MTA. Franklin White walked in, and I'm not sure whether he would have made the same decision had he known what was to proceed. But he walked in with his personality and his leadership, has been able to work with all factions to try to be the kind of a leader that the MTA has needed. He came at the most difficult time of the MTA. He came in when the MTA really truly needed to bring all, both organizations LACTC and the RTD together, he was given a task that was a, a tough one, almost an impossible one. Uh, the truth is that when Mr. White was the Transportation Commissioner in the state of New York, he had one boss, and that was the Governor of New York. When he walked into this job, he ended up with 26 plus bosses. And I'd like, I challenge any one of you to work with 26 people that tell you daily what to do and try to continue to work and build this organization. At best, it is difficult. Uh, I have tremendous respect for his ability. Uh, we have our down days, we have our up days, but Franklin White has been able to work through all of these problems and to try to get us to where we are today. I truly appreciate the work that he has done. Ladies and gentlemen, our CEO, Franklin White. Thank you, Larry. I couldn't uh, be more pleased uh, to be here today. Larry's remarks remind me, and someone referred to it this morning, that one of the first duties that the CEO had on arrival on the formation of the MTA was to recommend which of two uh, headquarters we were going to have. And uh, some of you may remember those days, and we wrestled mightily uh, among the crunching walls as to which one uh, to pick. And for a variety of reasons, we said, this is the place to be. Uh, I recommended that to the board. The board quickly adopted it. And uh, we're here many years uh, later because, the, of course, the vision was there uh, years earlier about what it was we needed to do. Virtually everything, I think, uh, has been said. So. On behalf of the staff who uh, are coming from many buildings and who need the unifying force that this building represents, uh, I want to uh, thank all of the people who uh, made those decisions that bring us here today. Uh, some of you are aware, of course, that we have people coming from, uh, for example, 425 Maine not in, certainly not in the best part of town. Uh, people who we have wanted to be out of there for the longest uh, time, and now they're here. Imagine the reaction of people working for years at 425 Main who are now uh, entering this building on a daily basis. The boost in the morale of those people literally cannot be measured. And the coming together 
will provide uh, added impetus that we as an organization need as we continue to meld uh, what used to be the LACTC uh, and the RTD. A lot of people worked hard in the uh, last several months to make sure that we were on time and that we began to move in and that all uh, was done for today's ceremony, in fact. And there are a lot of people to mention, but I'll mention one in particular, uh, my deputy Joe Drew, who spent... Uh, hundreds of hours working with all of the people uh, in Gateway uh, to get us here uh, on time. Uh, finally, let me say when this ceremony is over, please don't walk away. Uh, this is an incredible, incredible structure. Uh, Los Angeles is a world-class city. It does deserve a world-class transportation system. That's what we're doing in our 20-year plan. We should never be embarrassed or defensive about it. The future, as someone has said, is coming, and there's nothing we can do about it but prepare to handle it. And in all of that, Los Angeles deserves a world-class transit center as well. Those of us who have traveled know what it means to be in Grand Central Station. Someone this morning asked, what are you going to do with this fish tank? Who is going to hurry from bus to train to stop to look at your fish? And I thought for a minute about Grand Central Station or indeed Union Station if you ever walk through them. There are people playing the violins. There's all kinds of shows. It's a coming together in Grand Central Station. And we can have the same thing here. And the people who designed this facility put in all of the features, all of the attractions that will make this one of the grand public spaces in this city. And this will be a destination for visitors to Los Angeles as much as anything else will be uh, in this city. So I think we're rightly proud of it. We as staff are delighted to be in it. And I want to thank you all for being here today. Thank you very much. We are just about at the end of our program. Being forthright, being strong, having the fortitude to stand behind this center, this beautiful, magnificent center. I want to tell you, folks, I have not found one person that hasn't voted for me. Everyone has voted for me because everyone wants to be on the side of victory. Everyone wants to be on the side of something that is good. The time is going to come when everyone that's not here, everyone that is a critic, that is going to be a supporter of this beautiful transit center, that is not only beautiful, it is a kind of a place that people are going to use. Those are, that are transit dependent want a place that is beautiful, comfortable, safe, that's done right. They want to make sure that their tax dollars have something that they can be proud of. And that's what we have here. Now, you may not find too many that are going to write about this. You may get those that are going to make sure that on, whether it's on electronic media or written media, that all of the things that should not be said are going to be said. But let me tell you, those are the people that are going to bring their friends to see this beautiful, wonderful place that is going to be a monument, a historic place for Southern California. And it's going to be people like me and you and all of us that are going to be friends for, bring friends on tours to Los Angeles and say, take a look and see what we've got in Los Angeles. And I know you are going to do this. You and I know you're going to be proud. And I want to thank you very much for being here and being a part of this wonderful ceremony. That's right, you're really